Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Green, and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Lucy Porter, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Greg Davis. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of David Cameron. But what does C E P L stand for? Is it just a description of what he's like? Is it conservative, Etonian, posh, la di da? <laughs> Is it crap Elvis prowls London? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the essential conundrum? That is Cameron, cyclist employs <coughs> private limo driver. <laughs> is it Cameron employed in parking lot? Well, it's close, <laughs> mine was slightly more sinister. In this, mine was going to be, uh, he started a new car wash and he's going, clean everything, Polish lad. Mine's <laughs> is slightly more sinister okay, again. <laughs> Cameron enjoys penetrating ladyboys. <laughs> <laughs> That is, you're right, slightly more sinister than employing a Polish man to clean cars. Yeah. Is it Cameron 80% lizard? <laughs> <laughs> you put a mouse near him, <laughs> straight away. So, would the tongue just come out there? Yeah. yeah. You, you, was he holding a fly on the yeah. end of his finger? <laughs> John, I have to give you a clue, the C doesn't stand for Cameron. Conservatives. There we go, that's what the C stands for, not particularly <laughs> difficult. Enjoy. Leap, pointing lots. No, not pointing lots. <laughs> Um, and conservative extend penis length. Extend whole lead. Very good. Well done. Thank you very much, Judith. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was conservatives extend poll lead. This is the news that David Cameron's party are now further ahead of Labour than at any point since the height of the economic crisis last September, increasing pressure on Gordon Brown. We've got to remember what this poll rate is just a survey. <laughs> Surveys mean nothing. Right, the Liberal Democrats <laughs> got 18%. Nick Clegg got 18%. Who is he? <laughs> when he tells his mum he's coming round for tea, she looks him up on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I enjoyed the survey is that it did show... It actually showed the, number of the establishment party, let's say, going up, uh, and then the Greens and the BNP going down a couple of points, which is uh, an interesting one. The BNP rise in particular is interesting because they, for the first time in history, have exactly the same slogan of the Conservatives, which is out with Brown. <laughs> <laughs> are you suggesting that the Greens are losing people to the BNP? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. You know who doesn't recycle? Indians. <laughs> <laughs> how's, how's Cameron doing that? Well, Cameron, he he's keeps on talking anything. about he's looking after, and he will look after, hard-working families. And you're thinking, well, that's just politician nonsense, isn't it? When have you ever actually come across a hard-working family? There's always one dosser in each <laughs> and every family. <laughs> and if you don't know who it is in your family, it's probably you. <laughs> the thing about, we forget about Cameron is he presents this blokish image, but he's just unbelievably posh. He's pretending he's going to sort the banks out. He is the same people as the banks. They're the same people. The only reason he'd get tough with a banker would be if it was someone who farted on his head at school. <laughs> It is, it is the thing I found with Cameron, because Cameron, it's one of the easiest gigs in the world, because yeah. all he has to do is shut up, uh, and because Brown is clearly on his way out, so all Cameron has to do, basically, to get elected is not answer any questions. But he hasn't, and, and, hasn't. and all he does is, all does people say, well, what do you do? And he say, well, I'll tell you what we won't do. I'll tell you what we won't <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. everything. And this is a job interview. Yeah. How irritating does that get in a job interview if somebody just, like, if you had a, bil if you had a guy around your house, to, a builder, to fix a hole in the roof, and you said, well, there's a, there's a hole, what do you do? I'll tell you what I won't do. I won't, I won't fix that with cheese. That's what I won't do. <laughs> if you were interviewing a nanny, how weird would that be if you said to a nanny, well, what would you do with that child? I'll tell you what I won't do. Uh, I won't tie the child to a wall and go in the piss with my mates. I won't do that. <laughs> my favourite guy in the Shadow Cabinet is the only one who's ever said anything is Andrew Lansley, who came out, he's the Shadow Health Secretary, and he said people should enjoy the credit crunch because it'll allow them to spend more time with their families because they'll be unemployed. Other benefits include increased upper body strength from having to climb out of a skip every morning <laughs> and improved agility from chasing rats about with a fork. <laughs> Where's this guy? Does he go up to blind people and congratulate them on how much money they're saving on wallpaper? <laughs> Are the Conservatives living on the right planet? All this idea about confiscating mobile phones and bikes. How about 
confiscating knives and guns. <laughs> What's the worst you can do with a bike and a phone? A ride by texting. <laughs> Even if we got teenagers' mobile phones, we wouldn't even be able to understand what they're texting to each other. It'd be like a clockwork orange or something. <laughs> Are you slipping my grubel, Terry? I should throw foe. <laughs> I think what the text what the text will end up saying over the coming months is, you're not going to believe this, Dave. A Tory politician has just tried to mug me for my phone. <laughs> I now have his phone. Ha 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 ha. LOL, epic yeah. fail. <laughs> Thing. They're doing it to stop graffiti. Now, some graffiti is amazing, isn't it? I was driving along the other day, there was a big sign that said stop, and underneath somebody had written hammer time. Now, <laughs> you, you do not confiscate some, someone's phone if they're going to I'm all that. for I'm all for confiscating bikes, though, because I've only ever been beaten up once in my life, and it was by kids on bikes when I was 10. And it was when I learned a very, <laughs> very valuable lesson in life. I was playing cricket in a local park, right? And these kids on bikes came swooping down the hill and they nicked the stumps that we were playing with, right? And this was where I learnt my valuable lesson, which was, don't try and do voices. Because instead of saying to these kids, excuse me, can you give me my stump back? What I actually said to them, and I've no idea to this day why I said it, I said, excuse me... <laughs> would you mind handing me back my stumps? <laughs> and what they did was they beat me round the head with the stump. <laughs> You got them back. Wait, wait a minute, Hugh. That's taught you not to do voices. <laughs> <laughs> You've done every third voiceover I've ever heard. <laughs> You're the voice of Findus Crispy Pancakes. <laughs> They're amazing, though. Those, those moments you look back in your youth when you go, why did I say I used to get bullied a lot because I've got a lazy eye, still quite bad. And uh, kids are really cruel. Look at him, he's obsessed with his nose. Uh, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> I used to cry. I looked like a Picasso in the rain. And I did that thing. <laughs> I went to my dad for advice. Like, Dad, I need help. And my dad goes, say this to the bullies and they'll bully you no more. Picture me, age 10. It's nearly as embarrassing as your story. Age 10 going, bullies, how can my eye be lazy when it wanders around so freely? Bing! Bing! Pum! Ping, pum, hoo! So what's, what's Cameron doing here? He's playing football and he's looking like a twat. <laughs> you look at the girl in that photo. She's got no interest in going for the ball. Yeah, whatsoever. She's gonna... She is going to take yeah. Cameron out good and proper. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are just distracting him while the other kids nick his bike. <laughs> I think there's a photograph they're not showing us for that. We guys running really quickly because at the side there's Madonna with a net. <laughs> <laughs> Who has spoken out this week in criticism of the BBC? Um, oh, um, ha um, uh, Harriet Harman. Harriet Harman. Bizarrely, yeah. Harriet Harman's got obsessed with the uh, Strictly Come Dancing. Which is <laughs> it's amazing. It's got, and also, because basically what's happened, there's a 66-year-old lady who goes, you're not dancing right to the people. Arlene, Arlene Phillips. Phillips. Arlene and she's been replaced by Alicia Dixon. They even, and they've asked all sorts of politicians, they asked Sir Ming Campbell what he thought about the age row, and he said, biscuits would be lovely Linda. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, she did. Why, why is, you know, what's the big fuss about her getting sacked? It's show business! Yeah. It's show business, Arlene. It's not ugly business. <laughs> you think I'll still be on Mark the Week once these looks go? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not like she's completely disappearing from TV, Arlene Phillips. Uh, straight after this, she's going to be on live autopsy with Gunther Van Hagen. <laughs> and then she's back on our screens at Christmas being chased by the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Unfair, though, that they're getting rid of her and they got rid of Anna Ford and they got rid of all these women in their 60s when Bruce Forsyth is still working. Yeah. And Bruce Forsyth, they've found woolly mammoth fossils that are younger than Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> but he is still working and these oh, people aren't. And that seems to be wrong to me. Lots of, people, lots of people get replaced as they get older. But men don't quite so much as women. I'm absolutely on the women's side here. Oh. I do genuinely think it's terrible. And Joan Bakewell, she came out this week and said, you know, she thought this was awful. She represents the older person yeah, she's, in Parliament. Well. Technically, she, uh, Joan Bakewell, is the government's official and is their actual voice of older people, which is the yeah. perfect gig, because <laughs> you're never going to be replaced by somebody younger uh, if you're the voice of older. You can only get better at that job uh, as time goes by. Surely getting old is just depressing. That's what it's really about. Getting old is just depressing in general. Like, being married in your 60s is sort of like being a member of the National Trust. You've got free entry to an old room, but nobody wants to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, can I just say, 
if you don't want... knock, don't knock sex with older people. They're much more experienced, and they'll tidy your room. <laughs> This is my girlfriend, she's 66. I've never missed Emmerdale. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it isn't just women. The BBC, like, they're pretty patronising to old people, particularly the weather. Do you notice that? Whenever it's really hot, the weatherman always leads it and goes, now, old people, <laughs> it's going to be very hot, so look after yourself. Like, old people go, it's going to be hot! Get me dog costume, I'm going to sit in the car! <laughs> <laughs> well, with all these complaints about there not being enough old people on telly, they should just have their own channel. You know, like CBBs, have like CBiddies or something like that. <laughs> have some old woman in a chair. Hello, welcome to 24 hours of tutting and casual racism. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of that round, the point's going to Frankie Hugh and Gray! <laughs> now we play a round called Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. <laughs> This game involves Lucy, Greg, Andy and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge to produce the funniest stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is just against oh, nature. Uh, <laughs> OK, here we go, let's spin the wheel. OK, the first topic is Britain. Who wants to come in on that? Um, yes, I, I love Britain. Do you? Yeah! <laughs> kind of. Um, I think Britain's amazing, but I think we're quite hard on ourselves. Like, if you go to America and you do shows, they always get this thing where you go on stage in America, like in Chicago, and you say, oh, so what's Chicago like? And they go nuts. They go, woo, yeah, Chicago, woo, 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 for about a day. And then you come back over to Britain and you go to somewhere like Birmingham and you say, oh, so what's Birmingham like? And they all go, oh, it's a bit shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, do, I live in London in Britain. I live in Kentish Town, uh, which is lovely because it is actually like a Kentish town. Unfortunately, the town in Kent that it's like is Maidstone, which is crap. <laughs> <laughs> North London's quite posh, though, because there's a hairdresser's near us, which is called the Elysian Fields Hairdressers. Oh, it's where heroic hair goes to die. <laughs> yeah. you know, I used to live in South London. The hairdresser was called, we're going to cut you, slag. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley Supporter. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is sport. Who wants to come in on that? <laughs> so, hey, Freddie Flintoff, how drunk would he have been on Monday night? <laughs> That's all I've got on that one. <laughs> we have got a great new British hope for our sport, though. Laura Robson... Britain's tennis, 15 years old, both her parents Australian. <laughs> we don't mind immigration when they've got a bit of talent. <laughs> we object to people sneaking into Britain on a rubber dinghy unless they can do it really bloody quick. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ali Parsons. <laughs> OK, that leads us with Greg and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is education. Who wants to come in on that? Russell. I remember school being fun. I think my favourite mum moment ever in life, pretty much. There was a girl in our school called Lydia. She was trying to make her calculator work. She was repeatedly knocking it against a desk. And after about an hour, our teacher went, Lydia! How would you like if I banged you against the desk? <laughs> It's the greatest day of school. But now it's more sinister, isn't it? Like they're now talking about teaching five-year-old sex education. Of course, people are very angry. It's disgusting! It's too much! Like, calm down. I'm not going to teach them technique. <laughs> Rock, this is how I like to do it, kids. That's right. <laughs> kids aren't going to run home, put dolls around a toy car and go, look, Mum, they're dogging, they're dogging. <laughs> Could be some poor teacher trying to talk to five-year-olds about love. Can you imagine a harder job? Hello, children, I'm here to teach you about love. Good luck with that, mate. I'm off to lick that tree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Russell. OK, Greg, let's see what topic you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is the human body. 
<laughs> I have to tell you that being a tall man in this country is tedious, ladies and gentlemen. Tedious, because in small towns throughout the country, there are a series of jokes prepared by the locals on our behalf. Um, I'll be walking innocently into a local pub or down the street, and I'll get several jokes. Um, one of the jokes might be this. <laughs> Just to give you an example of the level we're talking about. <laughs> Another joke might be, what's the weather like up there? <laughs> it's... It's freezing. There's a massive climate change in this amount of space here, you toothless buffoon. <laughs> and probably the most offensive example of this, and this is genuine, I was at a cash point and there was a little old woman in front of me at the cash point tapping away with her claws and... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just quite angry about this. <laughs> and when she finished, bless her heart, she turned around and she hadn't seen me, she turned around and she went like this. Oh! <laughs> Not that sexually. Um, <laughs> she said, oh, and then with no hint of irony at all, she asked me this question. Would you like a job at my house changing light bulbs? <laughs> no. No, old woman. I have plans of my own. Now, get out of the way of the cash point. 20 minutes is long enough for you to have worked out that that's a Tesco club card. <laughs> Thank you very much, Greg. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Greg and Lucy. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board of six categories, Greg, which category would you like? Uh, science, please. OK, science is the category. The answer is... 40 years. What's the question? What is the average waiting time at Glasgow A&E on a Friday night? <laughs> is it for how long would I happily follow Beyonce up an impossibly tall ladder? <laughs> is, is it... it sorry, sorry. Sorry. Is it how long would it take to cook John Prescott? <laughs> <laughs> is it... Medium rare. Yeah. What is the youngest my balls have looked? <laughs> <laughs> is it how much older does Dara look than Russell? Is it, on average, how long does it take me to knock one out to loose women? <laughs> Genuinely, you know genuinely depends who's on the panel, I feel. <laughs> yeah. That average can sway oh, quite yeah, a lot. The, the day you were on, it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing it next week, and what I really don't want is to be thinking, oh, what's Frankie Ball doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be well, thinking... it's a safe bet, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Just, to be honest, where, where to be honest even if I'm not watching it, it's just that time of day. <laughs> <laughs> what duration did Michael Jackson's agent initially plan for his run at the O2 Arena? <laughs> <laughs> How long is it going to take me to raise the finance for my self-penned disaster porno film, 6911? <laughs> It's about space. It's about space. It's about space. It's about space. I know the answer, I... Hugh, please. I know the answer. Is it for how many years has Buzz Aldrin looked in the mirror and gone, it should have been me? Yes. <laughs> that is essentially the answer. Do you want to give the answer? No, more? it's um, 40 years since the, uh, we landed on the moon. Very good. Well done, well, Russell. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was how long is this man first set... Foot on the Moon, as celebrated this week. It was on July the 21st, 1969, that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot on the lunar surface, whilst the third member of the Apollo 11 crew, Michael Collins, waited in the spaceship. Collins later said he was sweating like a nervous bride. <laughs> it's such an interesting fact, because, like, we've only really... A lot of the uh, population just found out that there was a third guy. You're like, oh, really? Oh, cool. <laughs> How tempted would he have been, just when they were coming back, just to put on an alien mask? Like that? <laughs> Hey, you never guess what the... <laughs> 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 Can I get this straight? We're, we're going to talk about this like the moon landings happened? Yes, we're presuming <laughs> for the sake of this observation that the moon yeah. has actually so, happened. In 1969, right, they took off and went, oh, let's point out the moon, let's yep. land in the moon, oh, there's the moon, oh, time's up, let's take off from the moon, do, 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 go back to Earth, let's point it, we don't want to miss Earth. <laughs> NASA can't launch a rocket from here without blowing it up. Their next mission is called Operation Space Grave. <laughs> we, as a culture, do not have the ability to get to the moon. We don't have the ability to get a Saturday show right for Graham Norton. 
What else are we going to be talking about? Are we going to be talking about has... Aslan's birthday, are we? If they... Or Mrs. <laughs> Tiggy Winkle having a wedding anniversary? <laughs> it didn't fucking happen! It did happen. It, happened. it was a faked moon landing, oh. but you are confusing it with the one by Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> The current theory is that what they want to do is try and make a stopping off station on the moon so as they can get to Mars. And that sounds to me rather like a Ryanair flight, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes, we're flying to Mars, we actually land on the moon, <laughs> and there'll be a bus service from there. Yeah. <laughs> does, it, does it go into the moon and go into Mars seem a bit pointless now that we've invented Photoshop? <laughs> There's a man on Mars and it's Bruce Lee. <laughs> they've actually found that they've got a little bit of Mars back, haven't they? And they've actually found that there is life on Mars in the form of bacteria. So now we know that if the Martians ever do land, all we've got to do, a little bit at Sillip Bang, <laughs> we're away. It'd be a very short film, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. War of the Worlds. And just Tom Cruise cleaning his kitchen. Pfft, pfft. End of <laughs> War of the Worlds. <laughs> There's a British guy up there at the minute, isn't there, yeah, in the yeah. space oh, station? Yeah. yeah. No, but... just in space. Oh, OK. In space. Oh, just in space, generally. <laughs> oh, that's just <laughs> the sad thing in space. Is Satanta still have that satellite going around. <laughs> just <recently. laughs> and it's just trapped inside is Steve McManaman going, Hello, hello! <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, the, like the Superman baddie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the Satanta present presenters, uh, Steve McManaman, jor -El, they're all in there, trapped forever. <laughs> oh! We overextended ourselves financially! Ah. <laughs> you, know, you can't have a British space station. Now it would just sound so rubbish just to hear him up in space going, Nun Eaton, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know that robot you said you sent us? Yeah, it's an old man covered in tin foil. <laughs> We can't really have a British space programme, man. The only way we'll ever get a Union Jack onto the moon is if we stick Nick Griffin on Brixton High Street. <laughs> I don't know, would, you, would you go to Mars if you were... Are you offering? <laughs> I've already applied for the, uh, for the programme to be uh, fired to Mars. I've applied several times under the name Chris Moyles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just surprise me. Don't even tell me if you're going to do it. Just stick a sack over my head and fire me up there. <laughs> and if I say no, and if I say it's not me, I'm just joking. That's just a funny joke I do. <laughs> just fire me to there's Mars. Gonna be no, there's going to be no glory if we ever put a man on Earth, cos you're there for three years not using your body. You'd arrive in Mars go, here we go, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My legs don't work! <laughs> Who else is in the space race? China! China! China, China to reach them in. Do you know how they're doing it? How are they doing it? Human pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> On a motorway. <laughs> On a motorway so they can get closer to the moon. <laughs> they're always going at the moon during a full moon. They're not stupid, the Chinese. <laughs> yes, we take over moon. Not called moon anymore, called Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's no atmosphere, apparently Neil Armstrong's footprints are still Yeah, they're there, because the there's nothing to blow it away, yeah. Within an enormous Chinese moon city! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nobody else fear China! <laughs> you, are fear you worried you're not tapping into a general zeitgeist every time <laughs> you hear honest, China? It definitely it? seems to be just me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, and who else is doing it? India. India's, India's doing it. India's going to send up a rocket. I'd like to hear Frankie's <laughs> accent on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I can't because I'd lose my green fans. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... They're going to charm an enormous <sighs> snake out of a basket. We're more likely they'll, they'll send the rocket up and there'll be hundreds of people hanging on the outside of the rocket. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Any other I had, I, had, I had some idiot today go, why are they putting their yeah, Chinese and Indians up on the moon? At least there'll be some decent food. I might actually go. And you what? That was the only thing holding you back. Well, <laughs> yeah. OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to rustle this year, Andy! <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Deleted lines from a fantasy film. I am Aragorn, son of Arathorn, the heir to a Sildor and part of the Fellowship of the Ring. Please leave a message after the tone. <laughs> Ron had been suffering from swine flu, and people were avoiding him. Luckily, he was ginger and he was used to it. <laughs> I don't know why you're so upset, Harry. The original Dumbledore died three films ago and no one gave a shit. <laughs> Did you find Narnia in the wardrobe? No, Edmund. We found your porn stash. 
My friends, we will never hear the word Mordor again. Taggart has been cancelled. <laughs> It's not a five-headed dog. It's girls allowed. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I am Aslan, formed by the merger of Asda and Matalan. <laughs> we had only been there for a day, but to us it felt like 15 years. That's Birmingham. <laughs> Did you honestly think I could be defeated by someone younger? I am Arlene Phillips! <laughs> Welcome to Mordor, twinned with Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> this will never work, Frodo. <laughs> In the wardrobe, we found a magical compartment that led to the Fritzel family. <laughs> he stole it from me, my precious! My... Oh, no, it's in my pocket. <laughs> you right, John? How's it going, all right? Yeah. How's the kids? All right? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dwarf, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... Things you don't want to hear from your flatmates. That's my milk in the fridge. I squeeze it out of my tits with a vice. <laughs> no, we can't share the electricity bill. I've got a phone charger and a laptop, and you're on a life support machine. <laughs> My last flat was just like friends. Have you seen the one where Joey kills everybody? <laughs> I love talking to you. With you, I can be my real self. <laughs> <laughs> There's just two of us. Well, three if you count God. <laughs> I'd give it ten minutes in the toilet if I were you. That one could talk. <laughs> Well, if you don't think I'm a nosy bastard, why did you write that in your diary? <laughs> oh, that! That's just a novelty shower gel in the shape of a webcam. <laughs> hey, you said there wasn't enough room to swing a cat. Look at this. <laughs> Loads of room! <laughs> oh, uh, a Mr G had called? <laughs> he says it's time. <laughs> I don't see why I should pay for half the loo roll when I never use any. <laughs> I tell you what, that Hoover is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's, there's one certain way to find out who ate my <clears throat> yoghurt. An AIDS test. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Lucy and Andy! <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Lucy Porter and Russell Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Greg Davis. Thank you for watching. I'm Gary Green. Good night. It's creepy, weird and darn funny. Natalie Cassidy joins the cast of Psychoville for the penultimate episode tonight at 10. But before that, next on BBC Two, never mind the buzzcocks. <laughs>